On the Democrat side, President Biden is facing questions about age and vitality and even electability from within his own party. What used to be a whisper is now much easier to hear as some Democrats muse about a 2024 ticket without the incumbent president on it. Kevin Walling is a former Biden surrogate, and he joins us now. Welcome, Kevin. History is not replete with instances of people on either side or in any line of work giving up power. People usually don't jump. They have to be pushed. Is there any chance in your judgment that the president says, you know, I had a great career in the Senate, long career, two terms as vice president, one term as president, and that's enough? Uh, well, good evening, Trey. It's good to be with you. Listen, you know, it's really tough. You know, uh, you've been on Air Force One. I haven't. It's really tough to give up that aircraft, Marine One, the trappings of the presidency and uh, and what you can do in the job. Uh, and I think, you know, the president has said uh, he's ready for another term. He's itching uh, to hit the campaign trail and, and take the case to the Republicans. And, you know, he talked early on about being a transitional president. I think one of the things that he has really considered is the fact that it's likely that Donald Trump is the Republican nominee. And I think the president's sees himself as one of the few people that can actually defeat Donald Trump uh, in this second rematch. And, and I wonder if that is the motivating factor uh, for him really taking the fight to uh, Donald Trump, you know, in just over a year from now. Well, let me ask you about that. I mean, you, you may have more objectivity than the president. You may have more than I do. I mean, do you believe that President Biden is the only Democrat that could beat former President Trump if he were the nominee, I mean, you know more about polling than I do, but it looks like Biden's numbers are not great. President Trump's numbers are not great, but is there, is there no Democrat without like 50 years of baggage that would, that would do well in a head-to-head -head with former President Trump? Yeah, I mean, Trey, it's a great question. I mean, I think we've got a really good bench. You look at some of the cabinet secretaries, Pete Buttigieg, Gina Raimondo. We've got some great governors, Josh Shapiro, Gretchen Whitmer, uh, Gavin Newsom, of course, the vice president. But, you know, just judging from the track record of history, you know, this is this is an administration that beat an incumbent president. As you know, Trey, it's really tough to beat an incumbent president. Uh, it only happens a few times in, in recent memory. Uh, and, you know, he won seven million more votes than the president, uh, then President Donald Trump in 2020. So if history is any good, guide. And we've seen some of these special elections. We saw a midterm election uh, just a year ago that uh, really went broke for the Democrats, especially in the Senate. Republicans only picked up five seats. So I think he's gaming on the fact that he defeated the guy once, he can do it again, and that, you know, trends are in the right direction for Democrats in those special elections uh, and in the midterms. You know, I, I try to put politics aside. I mean, it's hard to do, but I try to put it aside and look at it from just a human interest standpoint. I mean, being president is, is arguably the hardest job on earth. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a neurologist. It just looks to the naked, untrained eye. Like the, the combination of the job and his age are combining to take a toll. So if he were to conclude, I've had a great career and it's enough, when would he need to make that decision to give everyone uh, an equal chance to be the nominee? Uh, well, what, what's kind of the date by which that needs to be done? Well, certainly, obviously, before the conventions, you have some filing deadlines coming up uh, in some of the early primary states, similar to the, the process that's playing out on the Republican side. Uh, so certainly by early spring. But, you know, listen, I think that, you know, to your point, Train, it's a good one. You look at the before and after picks of George W. Bush, even Barack Obama, who, you know, they were in their uh, 40s when they got elected. Certainly the presidency takes its toll. But, you know, the president, I'm 38. He's 80. I would say he's actually, in, in many cases, in better shape than I am. You know, the man works out every day. I haven't been on on a bicycle in a pretty long time. So I think, you know, Dr. Jill, uh, the president, are, are pretty good uh, judges of character in terms of what they're willing to put into this race and say they're all for it. Kevin Walling, thank you as always for joining us on a Sunday night. Look forward to visiting with you again real soon. Thanks, Trey. Good to be with you.